Good health to all from Rexall. It's the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show, presented by the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists. This is your Rexall family druggist here to say good evening and welcome from all 10,000 of us. 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. You all know us by the orange and blue Rexall sign on our windows, but our best identification is that we carry the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company. Like Bismarex, for example. This soothing antacid is one of Rexall's most famous products, and for good reason. In Bismarex, scientifically balanced ingredients work in a continuous relay to bring you prompt and prolonged relief from acid indigestion. It's year-in and year-out quality like this that we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Family Druggist brings you the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Titley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, yours truly, Bill Foreman, and starring Alice Faye and Phil Harris. After a long summer vacation, everyone connected with the Rexall show gathered yesterday for rehearsal of the opening program. Everyone, that is, except Phil, who was still away on his Canadian fishing trip. As we look in on the Harris home, Alice, William, and the children are impatiently awaiting Phil's return. Oh, how can Philip do this to us? <laughs> the opening show's tomorrow. We're going to have a rehearsal today, and he's not even back from his vacation. Sometimes I get so miffed at him, I could... I could... spit. <laughs> oh, take it easy, Willie. He'll be back. He's entitled to a little vacation. He went on a two-week fishing trip with some of the boys in the band, and he's only been gone five and a half weeks. <laughs> For him, that's not bad. How do you know he's been fishing? <laughs> I packed his duffel bag. And I put in all the equipment he always takes on his fishing trips. A casting rod, a fly rod, a fly box, two reels, and a gross of hangover pills. <laughs> the flutist is a drinking man. <laughs> well, if Philip doesn't show up in time for the show tomorrow, I'll have to take his place. Oh, don't be silly, Willie. You're not a performer. You don't have Phil's talent. How much talent do you need to say, hold it, Clyde? <laughs> Besides, you couldn't fool anybody. You don't look anything like Phil. Thank you, sis. <laughs> now, it'd be easy to look like him. All I'd have to do is wave my hair and put a few drops of mercurochrome in my eyes. <laughs> what time is Daddy coming home? He's been gone five and a half weeks, and I can't wait to see him. Neither can I. It's been so long. Mommy, what does he look like again? <laughs> Alice, you ought to be ashamed of yourself not remembering how your own father looks. Why, he's tall and blonde. No. <laughs> no. No, he's short and... Wait, wait, I'll get a picture and refresh my eyes. <laughs> Mommy, if Daddy doesn't come home in time for the program, what'll you do? Don't worry, dear. If your Daddy doesn't get home, I'm going to take his place on the show. Oh, Herman, say it isn't so. <laughs> you can't say Daddy's place, Uncle Willie. Oh, you won't have to, girls. Daddy is here. I just saw his car coming up the driveway. Oh, goody, Daddy's home. Come on, Phyllis, let's go out and meet him. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're all happy to see him. But he's been away three and a half weeks longer than he was supposed to be. Let's let him know that he was away a little too long. Shout from the rooftops, ring the bell in the steeple, I'm back again, you lucky people. <laughs> Alice, 
Alice, darling, I'm back. It's me. <laughs> Hello, Sam, dear. Uh, Did you bring the laundry? (laughs) Sam, laundry? Honey, it's me, Phil. Phil who? (laughs) Oh, this poor girl, she's missed me, so it's affected her mind. (laughs) You remember your daddy, don't you, kid? Sure, but you can't be our daddy. Why not? Our daddy had brown hair. Your hair is plaid. (laughs) <laughs> I'm wearing a tam o What's going on in here? What's... We were only teasing you, Phil We were trying to teach you a lesson for staying away so long What do you mean long? I told you I'd be gone a fortnight <laughs> You stayed away five and a half weeks I know, I missed you so much I couldn't stay away the whole fortnight Did you catch a lot of fish, honey? I sure did Hump I bet you didn't even throw a line in. Well, if it ain't Neptune's daughter. (laughs) That trip was just an excuse to have a wild time. You never went fishing. Now, just a minute. I went to Canada to fish, and fish I did, by joy. (laughs) I can prove it. Get a load of this. Oh, Phil, what on earth have you got there? Suitcase full of fresh salmon? (laughs) Oh, no, Phil, close that suitcase. Girls, take this fish out in the yard and bury it. Okay, Mom. Hey, wait a minute. Don't bury my alibi. (laughs) All right, I believe you were fishing. Willie, Willie, help the girls bury it, will you? Honey, if you had to bring the fish back, why didn't you put it on ice? Because me and the boys use the ice for a more important thing. (laughs) We're not going around Canada using strange ice. Now, Phil, you promised me you wouldn't drink. You didn't, did you? Now, how could you ask me a question? You know I... Well, I took one for medicinal purposes. You mean you were sick? I was deathly ill after that snake bit me. The doctor said it was the only thing to take for snake bites. Geez, the cute little rattler, he travels everywhere with me. You mean you carried a live snake with you? Yes, sir, and I have him bite me every day at martini time. (laughs) You know, Phil, you've been here for ten minutes, and you haven't even kissed me yet. Please, lady, I'm a married man. Oh. I don't know if I want to kiss you after the reception I got. You didn't recognize me. You asked me a lot of questions. And besides, why should I kiss you when you call me Sam? Will you kiss me if I call you Mo? No. I don't want to. You don't, huh? Your lips tell me no, no. But there's yes, yes in your eyes. I've been missing your kissing just because I wasn't wise. Wonderful, honey, and you deserve a reward. Come here, you pretty thing. Mm-hmm. Hey, is anybody home? I Alice, for shame. <laughs> Your husband.
husband's away for a few weeks and I find you in the arms of a man. Oh, don't be silly, Frankie. This isn't a man. It's Bill. <laughs> Certainly, Frankie. It's me, your pal Curly. Oh, you'll never know how I miss you. Gee, it's good to see you again, chum. Please, stop pawing me. <laughs> what kind of a greeting is that? I'm your best friend and I've been away for five and a half weeks. Aren't you even going to ask me what kind of a time I had? What kind of a time did you have? I had a wonderful time. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> you didn't take me. <laughs> Being petty. I'm your closest buddy and I've been away on a long trip. Don't you have anything nice to say to me? Don't you have any feelings? Of course I have. I got something nice to say, but... I don't like to get sentimental and emotional. But Frankie, when when your friend's been away on a long trip, it's it's okay to to get emotional and go ahead if you if you've got something to say to me, why just tell me what's in your heart, pal. Okay. <laughs> What'd you bring me? get this emotional? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't help myself. I've got a soft spot. Well, just wear a hat and nobody will notice. <laughs> you know, Frankie's right, Phil. You're supposed to bring back presents when you go on a trip. Well, I did, baby. I brought back a beautiful pink cashmere suit tailored by Skirt Perprelli. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Phil, that's so thoughtful. I'll bet it's beautiful. Sure is. Well, you see it on me. <laughs> Hey, Remley, wait till I tell you about my vacation. Just picture this. Hey, look, Lefty. What? Just five red-blooded American musicians on the loose. <laughs> on the loose, can you hear me? Just roughing it. Yeah. Where did you fish? Well, we left Los Angeles, and the first stop we made was the Sir Francis Drake Hotel in San Francisco. <laughs> A great fishing spot. <laughs> And then what? I ain't sure. Everything's kind of vague. <laughs> well, in San Francisco, you went to Portland, Seattle, Victoria, Campbell River, Qualicum Beach, Vancouver, Kamloops, and Winchester Bay. Do tell. <laughs> How do you know? The Pinkertons are a very reliable detective agency. Wow. <laughs> you put a bloodhound on me? <laughs> no, of course I didn't. Don't you remember you sent me a card from every place you stopped? Oh, as I was saying, Frankie, <laughs> look, we had a sensational time. At Winchester Bay, there's a swell guy there named Victor Peake. Took us out on his big fishing boat, look, no charge. Bill, ever... Bill, you better tell him later. We'd better discuss our opening show of the season. You know, our sponsor, Mr. Scott, called several times. We got tonight. time for that, honey. Right now, I'm still in a vacation mood. I want to tell the guy what... I'll get it. Well, if it isn't Mr. Scott, glad to see you, Scotty. So you finally got back, Harris. Yeah. Come on in, Mr. Scott. Make yourself at home. Pull up an independent druggist and sit right down. <laughs> hey, Alice. Hey, look who's here. Oh, hello, Mr. Scott. Gee, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, Mrs. Harris. Hiya, Scotty. Oh, no. <laughs> Not so early in the morning. <laughs> Ah, you look wonderful, Mr. Scott, and we want you to know we missed having you around. Certainly did. Life has been very dull for us without your lovable smile, your sweet, cheery voice, your big, fat checks. And Bill! All... <laughs> Talking about checks, Scotty, reminds me. I'm not the mercenary type, but I didn't get paid all summer. You didn't work all summer. <laughs> That's a pretty cheap attitude to take. a good mind to quit before we get started. Would you? <laughs> well, that's gratitude after all the work I put into this show. You people don't put any work into this show, and that's what I came to see you about. What do you mean, Scotty? Did you see the spread about you in this week's Look magazine? Oh, I meant to tell you about that, Phil. There's a very nice story in Look about us and the program. I, I have it right here. Look. 
Isn't this a flattering picture of you, me, and the children? Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Oh, Philzy, you're cute as a button. <laughs> then, head on, they can't see that double chin. You come on like Thor, kid. <laughs> hey, look, there's a shot of us and the riders lying around the pool hard at work. That's what I want to talk to you about, Harris. Is this the way the program's prepared? Yeah, we have a lot of fun putting on the show together, Scotty. We lie around the pool drinking and swimming. We really enjoy our work. That way we don't get no ulcers. But what I'm paying... <laughs> but what I'm paying you people, I expect at least one ulcer. <laughs> Any particular size? <laughs> you stay out of this. Harris, thank goodness you've had a whole summer to prepare the opening show for this year. It should be good, and I'm anxious to know what it's all about. Oh, my, have you got any ideas? <laughs> you don't mean you haven't got it ready. Well, what's your hurry, Scotty? The first show ain't until September. Sep... <laughs> Look, steelhead. <laughs> this is September. Well, what happened to June, July, and August? <laughs> Harris, do you realize that your opening program is tomorrow and you have nothing prepared? What are you going to do? Well, we could... Well, it... Well, it... Well, how about... Hey, wait a minute. I got it. I'll sing for the whole half hour. <laughs> I don't want you singing for a half hour. We'll make the decision, Scotty. <laughs> Curly, I think you've got a good idea. If you sing for the whole half hour of the first show, it'll give us something to do for the second show. What'll we do for the second show? Apologize for the first show. <laughs> But I can entertain the public for a half hour with my singing, and I'll prove it. I'll start off with Silas Lee. It goes like this. Now, I listen. don't want to hear you sing. I want a comedy program. I'm paying Bradley, for a comedy... hold I'm... him and make him I... listen. Okay, but who's going to hold me? Get a lot. Now, Silas Lee from Tennessee got a call from an agency to furnish music for a swell affair. He played a while and came a lull and Silas found the party dull. He then got up and loudly did declare. Look here, you folks ain't having fun. I'd like to show you how it's done way back in them there hills of Tennessee. We'll do a square dance, one and all. You folks get set to hit the ball and I'll give out with Mountain Melody. Now go and call the neighbors in to have some fun. It ain't no sin. The music's ready to begin. So listen to the fiddler play. Take that carpet off the floor. Leave your shoes outside the door. Come on, do that dancing chore. Everybody dance. The guests were taken by surprise. The Silas opened up their eyes with music they had never heard before. He said, this dance is new to you. I'll call the set you follow through. So choose your partners. Get out on that floor. <laughs> You down there with fancy socks, grab that gal with all them rocks, hit the floor and rattle your hops, listen to the fiddler play. Round and round, let her go, say she ain't left and dosey do circle back and hold that rope, everybody dance. Then Mrs. Stuyvesant McGee latched on to Senator McCree and started pitching, winging round and round. The count and countess deal of all were promenading across the hall and soon society was horned down. <laughs> Circle right, keep your hardware out of sight. Ain't no time to start a fight. Everybody dance. Silas really set a pace, and now in every swanky place, no more the modern dances will you hear. For since they've got so many thrills, the dance that came down from the hills is now the craze of high society. From Hollywood to Boston, Mass, throughout the land, the upper class are choosing partners for a jamboree. And now at every swell affair, who's calling sets some fiddling there? No one but Silas Lee from Tennessee. <laughs> Thank you.
There you are, Chief. Now, let's down. Like somebody scraping his fingernails across a blackboard. <laughs> Harris, I'm paying for a comedy program, and I want a comedy script by airtime tomorrow. All right. Don't get excited, Scotty. Your orange and blue complexion is turning red. <laughs> Take it easy, Scotty. We're going to have a script for tomorrow. Hey, let's do one of last year's shows. Let's... Hey, I got it. Hmm? Let's open up with last year's Christmas show. <laughs> this may come as a surprise to you, but Christmas comes in December. Again? <laughs> the same thing every year. It gets monotonous. Yeah. Santa Claus is in a rut. <laughs> Harris, I don't want any of those last year's scripts. According to your contract, you're to supply a fresh comedy show every week. If you don't have a new one ready for the show tomorrow, your contract will be canceled. Goodbye. Oh, yeah? If he keeps talking like that to me, I'll fix him. I'll have Alice buy the Rexall contract. <laughs> And every aspirin in it. You've got to have a show by tomorrow. You'd better call the riders and tell them to get to work. All right, so I'll call the riders. Oh, good. Oh, honey, if I got news for you, I was having such a good time, I forgot to hire the riders for this year. Oh, no. Now they're probably working for somebody else. Well, how are we going to get a script? Relax, yeah. Alice. There's nothing to worry about. I'll write it. <laughs> you? Sure. I can write jokes just as well as I can play the guitar. <laughs> you mean you can help the script as much as you've helped the band? Yeah. We're dead. <laughs> Don't be sarcastic. I know a lot of good jokes. I tell them at parties, I get big laughs. <laughs> got to do is clean them up a little. <laughs> no, Remy, you got something there. Between the two of us, we can write that script. There ain't nothing to it. But you have to have it ready by this time tomorrow. So what? We got a whole day, 28 hours. <laughs> Come on, Remy, let's get it that type right. All right. Hey, you know, Curly, we'll make a great writing partnership. Certainly. In fact, if we could find one other guy as good as we are... Mm -hmm. We might become as famous as that other writing team, George Bernard and Shaw. <laughs> what are those guys doing now? <laughs> well, Bernard's working for Burl. Shaw's with Hope, I think, and George is television. I don't know, but I know they're working the whole way. <laughs> well, we'd better get started on the script. Now, let me see now. I've got a girl. She's Miss Bay. Julia! <laughs> You should drop the groceries. Uh, well, somebody should have warned me you was back. <laughs> the sharp problem with my little nervous system. Hey, Judy, I ain't seen you all summer. Let me look at you, kid. <laughs> uh, it's good to see your gruesome little face again. <laughs> the feeling is mutual. What kind of a vacation did you have? Wonderful. Did it be any good? How do you feel? Well, how do I look? Oh, you poor man. <laughs> I just returned from a fishing trip this morning, Julius. Had a lot of luck, too. So I see. Where'd you catch that messy-looking salmon you got there? <laughs> That's Mr. Remley. <laughs> you don't have to identify me. Are you glad to see me, kid? No, just surprised. When you went to Canada, I didn't think they'd let you back in this country. Why not? It's against the law to smuggle dope across the border. I miss them already. 
<laughs> Forget about him, will you? And let's get busy now. Get that typewriter so we can get started with the script. Okay. I got the opening line. Now, listen to this. The announcer says, as we look in on the Harris family... <laughs> Gee, that's a stroke of genius. You know, <laughs> you know Remley, with our combined brains, this ain't going to take us long at all. Now, it's a great start. Now, let me see now. As we look in on the Harris family... <laughs> It's 10 o'clock in the morning already. Yeah. We've been working on this script for 12 hours. But we're making progress. Yeah. <laughs> hey, read me what we got so far. Okay. Uh, as we look in on the Harris family, we find them... Yeah, go on. That's all. <laughs> oh, we're doing great. It's only taken us 12 hours to write three words. Look, Remley, we're in trouble. As we look in on the Harris family, we find them. Find them doing what? We ain't got nothing to talk about. All right, I'll change it. <laughs> Listen to this. As we look in on the Harris family, we don't find them. <laughs> <laughs> Figure? If you're not there, you don't have to say anything. Look, Remley, will you face it? We can't write this. We've got to have a script in a few hours for the show. Now, where are we going to get a script? Wait a minute. Why didn't I think of this before? I know where we can get all kinds of scripts. Curly, you have the cast at the studio in time for the show, and I guarantee I'll be there with a great script. I'll see you at NBC, Curly. Okay, Frank. <laughs> Good old dependable Frank. He's always getting me out of trouble. I don't know what I'd do without that clever... <laughs> We go on the air in one minute. The cast is all ready, but no scripts. What are we going to do? Just take it easy, honey. Take it easy. Frank said he'd bring him, and he will. Only I wish he'd hurry. Harris. Harris. Do you realize the show will be on the air in a few seconds? Where are the scripts? I said Frankie's bringing them. There's nothing to get excited about, Scotty. Hey, I told you I'd do it. Here are the scripts. Well, thank goodness. Where'd you get them from, Rimley? Right here at NBC. They were already written. I just had to make a few changes. Well, pass them out to the cast. We're going to be on the air in a second. Right. Hold it, hold it, Rimley. What? This isn't one of the programs we did last year, is it? I give you my word, we never did this one before. Stand by. We're going on the air. Good health to all from Johnson's Wax. <laughs> The Johnson Wax Program, starring Fibber McHarris and Malice. <laughs> Frankie, what's the matter with you? See, I can't go on this air with Fibber McGee and a Molly strip. What's the matter with you? Why not? I might help you, Hooper. Oh. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies, have you tried Johnson's new glow coat? The new glow Stop coat makes it easier to keep the kind of dry you want on your linoleum. Do you hear me? Break off your glow coat. I want to show you floor. Do something. Bring in the music. Oh, oh. and Phil will be back in just a moment. But right now, our Rexall family druggist talks with a customer who might as well be speaking for all of us. Look, I'm just naturally lazy, and I want an easy way to tell I'm buying reliable drug products. Well, ma'am, I'll tell you the easiest way I know. Look for the name Rexall on the label. Oh, what makes you so sure of Rexall's quality? Well, let's take a for instance. Rexall's multiple vitamin capsules called plenamins. What about them? Well, now you know that over a period of time, any vitamin product will gradually lose some of its potency. Yes, the doctor told me that. And that's why plenamins are carefully fortified, so that when you buy them, you can be sure the potency is at least the amount stated on the label. In fact, Rexall guarantees that plenamins give you more than your daily minimum requirement of every vitamin for which such requirements have been established. What did you call them? Plenamins? That's right, ma'am. Plenamins. They're a sample of the quality we family druggists are talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Phil. Phil, 
Well, now that we're alone, tell me about that suitcase full of salmon. Did you really catch it yourself? Well, uh, no, I didn't. Well, where'd you get it? I want it on Hollywood Calling. You are tuned for the stars on NBC. NBC.